Okay, before I start the review for this week's episode of Legend of Korra, um, one thing that I need to get off my chest right now. In the recap, they say that Korra is the first ever metal bending avatar. Okay, uh, I can understand the, all the other previous avatars from Avatar Roku and beyond, but what about Aang? Didn't he ever once bother learning metal bending? I mean, one of his best friends was a metal bender. Uh, the city they were building to create peace was being made of metal. The cars are made of metal. You never once thought, eh, you know what? Metal bending would be beneficiary for me to learn. But I guess not. I don't know. That just seems kind of weird. Uh, it almost gives me a feeling of favoritism. Like, Every, they, the creators love Korra so much that they have to make her a step beyond more special than all previous avatars. But maybe that's just me. It just it just feels weird that Aang never once bothered to learn metal bending. Or lava bending for that matter. I mean, he had to defend a village from the volcano once. You shouldn't think, you know, this might happen again. I should probably learn lava bending too. But, again, that's an issue that cannot be resolved. It's in the past now, so... What can we do? Uh, but anyway, it, it also goes into Korra being able to metal bend so easily. And I always believed that the reason the Avatar always uh, learned other bending easily was because naturally, subconsciously, uh, she still had the skills of the previous Avatars. At least I think that's what they mentioned in the first Avatar series that the reason Aang was so good at learning bending why uh, no one should worry about him not learning it so quickly was because all the previous Avatars have already learned it and their knowledge and skills are already implanted in Aang. But with Korra, if we remember, her connection to the previous Avatars is gone. The previous Avatars are gone. They are no longer there. So that means their knowledge, their skills, should not be with her. I can understand she still kept her earth, water, fire, and air bending because she already learned that, she already mastered it. But now she's able to learn metal bending so quickly. Um, either that says she was should be have been naturally born an earth bender who can use metal bending, or the writers just again showing favoritism want her to be special, more special than she already is. She's the fucking avatar how much more special can she be but again i'm sounding like i hate the episode i don't i really did love this episode it was fantastic the criminals finally come in they got there pretty fast i mean wow that they were just it was like teleporting but either way opal is off to the airbending temple criminals sneak into the city and kidnap cora uh but they're caught Everyone starts fighting against them, and it really does impress me at how well animated this whole sequence is. The hostage situation, so to speak, of trying to save Korra, bungee jumping into the lavas that the lava bender created around them as a defense. Um, part of me was kind of hoping that Korra would be kidnapped. Because it would give a sense of urgency for everyone else to improve themselves of trying to rush in and save Korra. Instead of Korra always being the leader, always being the one who steps in, always being the one that jumps into action and saves the day. It would be nice that we saw the Team Avatar save Avatar for once. Um, like it did, they did it kind of in the first season. Although she saved herself, so... It kind of goes to say, yeah, it, she was never saved by her friends. Um, but, again, that's fine. She you knows she got away, you know, they saved her, the, the, but the criminals got away as well. Uh, so they're trying to figure out how the hell the criminals snuck in. And <laughs> as soon as I saw that their official lie detector was the advisor, I immediately thought, Really? This guy's, a, this guy's obviously the villain. He's obviously, obviously the villain. If you, put, if you put so much trust into one person, you immediately make them the most suspicious person out of everyone. 
because no one person can be that truthful. No one person can keep that many secrets without uh, being evil. You can't just trust one person to always tell you, oh yeah, this guy's lying, this guy's lying, this guy's lying. Oh, but this one guy is telling uh, the truth. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, and he's like, no, no, you're not. So I merely knew. I saw it coming. It's like, yeah, he's not the he he's not the the good guy he pretends to be. Uh, Varric, finally, the comedy is finally back, but mostly from Varric. Uh, but that's understandable. Ver be Varric being Varric is hilarious. Uh, but finally, he's the one who tells him, "Hey, you know that guy's suspicious. You know, you don't uh, just say." Uh, that guy's telling the truth and just have all this evidence lying around in this house like no it's too too perfect so they go to the advisor's house and they find a secret entrance and they finally figure out yeah you're lying but he escapes and he blows up he apparently there was this bomb he had stored up in his in this like little secret passageway and it blew up you know everyone's safe safe though he escapes and Sue is completely horrified that this person she trusted with her own life, her own city, her own family, was the one who betrayed them. Uh, but of course, Lin Beifong says, it's too dangerous. You know, Korra, you have to be under protection. We're going to her Republic City. Korra doesn't want that. She says she wants to go after the criminals. And Sue uh, agrees with her. Um... And again, uh, usually I think it's fine for the hero to go after the villains. But not normally when the villain's target is the hero. When the villains are targeting the hero directly, it's kind of okay to just sit there and let, oh, they'll come to me. You know, they seem desperate enough to kidnap me. There's no way for them to come back again. Like I said, it would have uh, been more uh, pressing, more important to go after the criminals if they got away with kidnapping Korra. But instead, it just Korra's like, like those bastards dare attack me, you know, so I have to go attack them. It's like that's kind of petty in in a sense. But like I said, I don't hate this episode. I loved it. You know, the bend, all the bending was fantastic. The animation was fantastic. The police work, while predictable, was fantastic. Uh, but, oh no, I just, it's, it just seemed like these villains so far, while great and interesting, I, I want to see more of them, feel like there's no reason to go after them, really. They're not threatening a city, they're not threatening... A friend or an important figure or the world they just want the avatar so going after them doesn't seem as worth investing like I can't say yeah go get those guys how dare they attack you Korra you deserve better like no wait you've already got everything you could ever want what you know, how, how much more you can you deserve uh, but either way Without knowing why they want to kill the Avatar, I can't really say uh, who's right and who's wrong. I can't really say whose motive is more interesting or m to get behind. But either way, I'm still waiting for a backstory to these criminals. I want to know more about them, how they ended up where they are now, why they hate the Avatar, or at least want to use her power for some reason. At least I assume. They didn't seem that they want to kill her, they just want to kidnap her. Why? Who knows? But either way, I really love this episode. I can't wait till next week's episode. It's going to be hard, but we'll have to wait until it's online. Hopefully I can find it in time. And But at least it's every week now. So I won't have to wait every two weeks for it. But either way, great episode. Can't wait to see what happens next. I'm Tony Dragon. Bye.